Since colonial times, more than 27,000 alien plant species have been introduced to Australia. More than 2,800 of these are now well established in the Australian environment. One of them is Croftonweed, a native of Mexico. Croftonweed is now widespread along the east coast of the continent, northwards from Wollongong into Queensland. Around Sydney, it has been spreading rapidly for more than 30 years, and it's now a problem, especially on small farms where horses are kept. It's an aggressive, erect, multi-stem perennial shrub that grows to between one and three metres in height. It has long, upright, purplish stems that are covered with short, reddish hairs. The leaves are triangular and opposite with serrated edges and long stems. Small white florets cluster to form dense crowns in early spring. By mid-October, when this film is shot, they are drying out and starting to set seed. A single plant can produce between 10,000 and 100,000 seeds per year. Individual seeds are brown to black, about one and a half to two millimetres long, with a parachute-like plume of white hairs about four millimetres long at the top. It takes 25,000 of them to weigh just a single gram, and as a consequence, they become windborne over long distances to invade previously non-infested areas. Crofton weed is poisonous to horses, and the first sign is coughing, and this is made more pronounced with exercise. If horses are not removed from infested areas, death is the eventual result. Now you can readily find written and online information from the powers that be stating that access to the weed for as little as eight weeks will cause sickness and permanent damage, perhaps implying there'd be plenty of time to take action should a horse start eating Crofton weed. But this is at odds with experience at the Terry Hills Animal Hospital. Crofton weed is a, a common um, nuisance plant around, or well, certainly around this part of the world and um, it often grows along fence lines. So paddocks that wear their horses frequently along the edge of the fence line and just outside, especially if that verges on the bush, we can sometimes see huge stands of Crofton weed. Um, they also seem to like to grow along um, beside roads, like in, in drain type arrangements. Crofton weed is a very toxic plant to horses, very toxic. And it's, it's described as being very readily ingestible, meaning that horses are meant to like eating it. Funnily enough, we don't see many horses that do eat it, which is good because, as I say, there's so much of it around here. It supposedly has a bit of a carroty smell or, or taste when you snap the stem, so maybe that's why horses who like carrots, maybe they're the ones that ingest it. Um, the toxic principle of Crofton weed is not known. The toxic dose is not even known. It appears to probably differ from one horse to the next from, from what we can see. We do hear of horses that we know have eaten Crofton weed that never get any symptoms and other horses that probably haven't ingested very much um, getting sick. In our experience, every case that we've seen in the time that I've been working here at Terry Hills, where we have a lot of Crofton weed, every single case that we have seen has died. That's not a lot of cases, but 100% death rate. One case that always sticks in my mind was a pony that um, no one saw it eat the Crofton weed, but we were able to diagnose it because of the symptoms the horse developed severe pulmonary edema, water on the lungs you might say, and the amount of fluid that was sloshing around in its lungs when it should have been air was horrific. The reports that I've read and from other vets that I've spoken to, that's been the usual situation. Um, the horses have all died and or died or actually been put down and that's usually what we've had to do. They've been that sick that it's just intolerable to have them suffering because they're gasping for breath. Um, their gums are going blue because they're, they're running out of oxygen and life is, is miserable. There's clearly no way out of it. I think the reason that it is so poorly amenable to treatment is that it appears that the cells, the lung cells, are, are killed by the toxin. 
And I, I guess I have seen at least one case of what we call chronic Crofton weed poisoning, which was a horse that developed mild respiratory symptoms, which just became worse over days to weeks. And its lung tissue, when we did the post-mortem, had basically been replaced by scar tissue. So instead of having these nice lungs that, that absorb oxygen and did the things that lungs are meant to do, these, these lungs were just scar tissue that, well, they didn't do anything and the poor horse couldn't even walk up a five metre hill without stopping and gasping for breath. It was, it was awful. Uh, the majority of cases that we've seen, and we're not talk, as I say, we're not talking a large number, have been acutely ill, like within, within days of ingesting the um, Crofton weed have been extremely ill and on the verge of death. Interestingly, when they did some studies on this, or according to the textbooks from many years ago, uh, they think it takes ingestion of Crofton weed over a lot longer period to, to cause illness, but that's not been our experience, and I think it just shows that um, there's a lot more to learn about it. Um, I, I think it's absolutely essential to get rid of it, and especially, they should especially be concentrating on the margins of the paddocks where the horses are. It's rarely going to be found in the middle of the paddock, um, so around the fence lines and that sort of thing, they should be using all the methods available to, to, to kill the, the weeds. The other thing that uh, all horse owners should be thinking about is a horse is probably unlikely to eat Crofton weed unless they're really hungry. Uh, so if they're getting adequate feed from other means, they're probably not going to eat Crofton weed. Um, so if your paddocks are a bit bare, um, well, you probably need to supplement them with more hay and they're the cases when you really need to be checking around the edges of the paddock to make sure there isn't any Crofton weed. I'd encourage all horse owners to familiarise themselves with Crofton weed and eradication methods. I, I, I think it's really important. It is possible that Crofton weed is at its most poisonous during or soon after flowering in spring. Inhalation of pollen may also be a factor in poisoning. Crofton weed can be pulled out by hand when the ground is soft, usually after rain. It can also be dug out with a mattock. The most important thing to do is bag the flower heads and dispose of them carefully so as to prevent further seeding. It can also be slashed, but the dried plant remains attractive and toxic to horses. The New South Wales Department of Primary Industry Management Guide, 5th edition 2003, specifies 360 gram per litre glyphosate diluted 200 to 1 as a spray for actively growing plants with full foliage. This is likely to be most effective late in summer or autumn.